Believing that you're destined for heaven when you're not would be the most tragic self-deception. David Servant's book, The Great Gospel Deception, will help you be sure that heaven will be your eternal home. Order your copy at heavenward.tv. Alrighty, welcome back. We have just been reading this amazing story of the judgment of Ananias and Sapphira. And we left off in verse number 10 of Acts chapter 5. Let's read the final word of this story in verse 11. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard all these things. I bet you there wouldn't be too many people getting up in front of the church and lying about how much they sold their land for, uh, you know, and that they were giving the full price after that. In fact, I think uh, there'd be very few lies being told at all for quite some time by everybody inside the church, okay? Uh, God wants us to tell the truth. Now, I brought up to you last time something that we find uh, the, in the writings of the Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians, uh, because this raises some questions about Ananias and Sapphira. Is God still doing that today? Well, uh, yes, God is still doing that today, maybe not so uh, overtly or so publicly where a, a preacher or a, an apostle or something is speaking to a person, uh, con uh, condemning them for their, their blatant sin and them immediately falling, falling dead. But certainly uh, from those days and now on to the present time, uh, we run the risk of premature death if we uh, are not following the Lord as closely as we should. Okay, and it's not my place or your place to judge anybody. So don't think that I'm going to name names or I'm going to say, well, you know, when so and so uh, who was a Christian died, you know, probably before their time, well, they must have had some kind of a sin that the Lord was not pleased with. Oh, that's none of our business unless the Lord would make it our business. In this case, with Ananias and Sapphira, God made it everybody's business. Okay, because it was a public thing. But Paul wrote it to the Corinthians uh, in chapter 11 of 1 Corinthians, verse number 28. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. So anytime we partake of the Lord's Supper, there should be a self-examination. For what? Making sure that I'm, what I'm doing is right before the Lord. And if there's some unconfessed sin, something I know that I feel guilty about, I need to confess that to the Lord and make it right and turn away from that. Paul goes on in verse number 29. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly. Okay, so if you do this wrongly, not examining yourself, not judging the body or your own body, perhaps is a, is a, a better way to say it. Uh, you can eat and drink God's judgment upon yourself. And Paul goes on to elaborate in verse number 30 of 1 Corinthians 11. For this reason, many among you are weak and sick and a number sleep. That means they're, they died. Okay? Now... Did they go to hell? I asked that question the last time. Not necessarily. But first, let's look at the antidote. Let's look at how we can prevent this. Verse 31, but if we judged ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. So the way to escape God's judgment is to judge yourself rightly. That would be to say, whoa, am I obeying the Lord? Am I doing what he wants me to do? Am I pleasing to him? If not, confess it and repent and get on track with the Lord. Okay, and, uh, you know, it, it, honestly, if I find myself sick, which, honestly, I, I'm a very healthy person. I'm very, very, very blessed in that respect. But if I found myself sick, particularly with something that was, you know, not just a, a cold or something you could just pick up somewhere, I would be examining myself and saying, Lord, is there anything that you're trying to send a message to me here? Is there anything I need to do? And I'm not telling you to drag up something, you know, invent something. And I'm not saying that everybody, every Christian who is chronically ill or chronically weak, there's something that they need to adjust. All I'm saying is that here's what the Bible says, okay? Uh, chronic sickness, uh, weakness, and premature death can be an indication of God's discipline and or judgment in our lives. So take a look. Spend some time seeking the Lord, asking him. Obviously, he's not going to hold it back. And again, don't drag up something to condemn yourself, 
but spend time with the Lord and say, Lord, am I preventing your blessing by my disobedience? If we judged ourselves rightly, Paul wrote, we would not be judged. But now look at this. Here's another little indication of the Lord's goodness in verse number 32. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world, which I made reference to last time. Okay, so I can't interpret that any other way than by saying, when we're judged by one of those things that Paul just listed, weakness, sickness, or even premature death, that's an indication of God's discipline in our lives. And I would think that would mostly apply to the weakness and the sickness because discipline results in changed behavior. And of course, if you're prematurely dead, you, you, you know, there's no chance to change your behavior, at least on this earth. Okay, And we're disciplined by the Lord. Why? So, so we'll correct ourselves so that we will not be condemned along with the world, he said. Okay, and I cannot interpret that any other way than just simply that the world's going to be condemned. Ultimately, the world is cast into hell for their sins. God's trying to keep us out of hell. And if he sees us persisting, going the wrong direction, and we don't judge ourselves, again, this is not something that happens instantaneously, but something that I think from my observation and from looking at other scriptures and knowing something about the mercy and the long suffering of God, something that happens over a process of time, you know, pushing the example of Ananias and Sapphira away, you know, to the side. I, I'm tempted to think that Ananias and Sapphira were guilty of this deception, not just on this one incident, but perhaps, you know, it was a consistent behavior in their lives, you know, as Christians. I, I have no evidence for that whatsoever other than the fact that I just know that God is generally very merciful and long-suffering. But if we persist and do not judge ourselves, then we're in danger of you know, premature death, but still the Lord's doing it so that we won't be condemned along with the world, praise God, so that we'll be saved yet as through fire. Okay, all right, we're gonna keep reading in Book of Acts next time, looking at the signs and wonders that were being done. It's marvelous, can't wait to see you next time. God bless you. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.